Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends. And we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy because now it's time to rewind. I want to hear from you in your own words. What is Super Mario Brothers, the 1993 version, about? Can you make sense of this film in your own way? Okay. Tell us, anyone out there who hasn't seen it, who just wants to hear it <laughs> through us, what is it about? This is much harder than Poltergeist. Was. Oh, it is. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so let's see. All right. <laughs> so the story is about two plumbers that are in a random mob war with another plumbing company. And Capelli. In the Scapelli brother. Was it just Scapelli brothers or just Scapelli? Or just Scapelli? I, I think it's Scapelli it's, brothers. I okay. think. If, so they're in a battle Scapelli. with Scapelli. And in mm -hmm. order to try to win this battle with Scapelli, Sca um, they go to a job, but the Scapelli brothers beat them to it. And in order to, this, in order for the Scapelli brothers to take them down, they, oh my God, don't they start a flood? Yeah. And then the flood, they yeah. find themselves in a cave. They randomly get transported into I guess this is the Mushroom Kingdom. Right. And we come to see that um, King Koopa is this tyrant and dictator. Feels like the United States from 2016 to 2020. It's totally, um, total dictator. Yeah, it feels very um, Blade Runner in this yes. in this other world, right? Very like Mad Max Blade Runner uh, 1984 or something. And yeah. in the process, we meet this woman named Daisy yeah. um, who has this secret tale that she secret origin that she discovers that she is the daughter of the king who happens to be the sludge oh my and god then, it's so gross i love it and then in the and then after that man this is tough this one's oh it's tough, tough one. i i'm already confused but keep going i like it all right so we get to we get the moral of the story here is that corruption does that corruption and political uh What's the right what's the right term to say? Political corruption does not work in the end because Daisy is the true heir to the Mushroom Kingdom, and our heroes must give up. Mario goes back with the true love of his life, Daniela, who yes. by the way, I always like this I, I like using these terms to just, you know, bust my friends' balls and they bust my balls too with this. He outkicked his coverage so much with Daniela. She is so pretty. <laughs> She's so pretty. She's I love so Daniela. Pretty. I rem it's funny again because like I said I haven't seen this in years, but the second I saw Daniela at the restaurant, I'm like, "Oh my god, his girlfriend and I love when she's with the other girls in their little like jail cell in in the you know, the other dimension. I love Daniela. She's so cute and I love when he's above her and he's trying to like get her attention but doesn't want to upset the goombas, right? Love it. Yeah. And the big thing that Koopa wants in his in his plot to become a, a tyrant is a, a random stone you gotta, mm -hmm. you gotta remember the stone oh the meteorite um, the me dave i wanted that so badly i wanted like i wanted nintendo or the movie studio i guess what well, who was this like uh hollywood pictures one of these i so badly wanted someone to sell me a necklace with that stone i was obsessed obsessed it's and i wanted it to be magnetic how it can like just go into like you know, because it, it's in the egg, and then at the you know at the end they're getting it into the big stone. Oh, I'll I, say, I was I'll say this, Mark. If Hot Topic was around back then, you probably would have. Had that. <gasps> you are so right. Hot Topic would have sold the meteorite. Oh, man. And you probably would have been able to get that metal tube too yes the, I, yeah i can see i know can we, doing a... can we just talk well uh, i want you to uh, I, I think you finished your story or maybe yeah, you did yeah. yeah yeah okay can we just talk about how daisy was born from an egg wow wow the beginning the baby hatching from an egg within this weird metal cylinder dropped off at the church these nuns are bugging out i mean that's right away when you know okay this is not going to be your average movie right i uh, no, not at all. Not at all. It reminds me, like, I have a very soft spot for Batman and Robin. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, um, yeah. I've, I've gone on record like on other podcasts and just like with my friends about like the ideas that like we can destroy Batman and Robin for not being Batman and Batman Returns. But when and Schumacher has gone on record in terms of like this is a job that I was given and I was given a movie to sell toys. Mm. And anyone that watches Batman 66 that praised Batman 66, look at that and they consider mm. like some people consider Adam West the best Batman. Hmm. At in the 60s, that's what it was trying to accomplish, and that's what Batman and Robin was trying to accomplish. It was the movie it set out to be. This movie, I guess, this is what it sought out to be, but I put it in the same conversation of Batman and Robin in terms of like it gets the guilty pleasure vibe right hmm. because you look totally. at a movie that comes out in 1997, uh, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Oh, yeah. And I think it's one of the worst movies ever made. I remember not liking that one. I liked the first Mortal Kombat so a few I. years prior, right? But that other one, I, ugh, yeah. It doesn't. It it doesn't capture. I feel like there's some magic here, even though it's oh, not yeah. a good movie. But I think there's some magic for us. Like mm-hmm. I would, I wouldn't show this. Like I would show this to my daughter, but I wouldn't. Sh- if I had a cousin that was like 15 or 16 years old, I wouldn't dare because they mm-hmm. wouldn't get it. Or yeah. even at early twenties, I I don't think they would understand like the fun of these movies because yeah, I think nowadays with film criticism specifically, there's very much a oh, this has to be a certain art artsy fartsy thing, right? Listen, it has to be I, great or awful. There's very little in between. Right? And listen, I'm the type of guy that like me personally, I can love something like going to last year for example. I could su- like love something like Tar, but mm. I could also love something like random generic marvel movie number 745 right and that's kind of the way i feel with super mario brothers i think it's like it's oh totally it's very much like a magical experience to watch this movie Um, oh yeah even on on the show that's why i love talking about all these random well i guess they're not all random this one's kind of random right but i love talking about all these different movies that i love you love because like we can talk about the oscar winners and then we can talk about the major flops that turn into cult classics, right? You have your Titanic, your Evil Dead, you got Super Mario Brothers, you got Tar, right? So yeah, there's there's absolutely, I think, a lot to love here, whether you do look at, look at it with a nostalgic lens like you and I might be, right? Or if you're someone our age seeing this for the first time and just enjoying this whole world they built. I mean, it really does feel like an amusement park, you know? It does. It does. They put so much effort into all this stuff, all that fungus, the dripping, you know, and how funny that that turns into Lance Henriksen. I totally forgot. I forgot that was Lance, Lance Henriksen too, yeah. Right? Has a cameo. How random, you know? Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of work involved in this movie and you can feel it and I appreciate it. You know, I, it, not all of it works. I think no. it's got a great soundtrack. I love that they have um, the divinals that uh, they sang. Uh, when I think about you, I touch myself. But this Self, song yeah, is a yeah. different one, you know, this in this movie. But um, yeah, you know, this movie actually, I never thought of it this way. But rewatching it, it's a lot like Tank Girl. Did you ever see Tank Girl with uh, Lori Petty? I saw it once. <gasps> oh, yeah. Dave. I don't yeah. remember much of it all. It's a wild. It's more wild than this. Wild with uh, Naomi Watts is one of her first big movies. Is it? Oh, Naomi Watts. Look. Yeah, dark hair. Uh, Malcolm McDowell, but it is Mad Max. It is wacky comedy action, and I feel like the early '90s we were seeing some. You know, it's it's similar to Leprechaun for me, where it's just this total crazy, weird, wacky comedy. You know, so I appreciate at least uh, that they just went Gonzo and just. Tried some and I, a buddy of and I and I think this is probably as did it did it was the execution what probably many people expected no but if you right. really think about it can you imagine them trying to use CGI in ninety three to get some of this stuff done it would look ridiculous yeah and you know they this, use a little bit of it I love the the watery rock how they enter the other dimensions right mm-hmm. like and it looks it looks pretty rough you know it mm-hmm. it's not great CGI you know. But I remember that very well, the, the you know, the, the fluid warped world to get in. Oh, and actually when, when we see Mario falling through the dimension to get to Koopa's city, right? It actually made me yeah. think a lot of Lawnmower Man. Do you remember that? I movie? love Lawnmower. I yeah. love Lawnmower Man. Yeah. I feel like that was right around this time as well. And that had some weird, strange visuals. And so that was kind of similar. Or even like Freddy's Dead, which came out around this time as well. Yeah. Nightmare, Nightmare 6. Yeah, that one's rough. But that also had some weird, trippy video gamey visuals so it does yeah. yeah this is definitely a certain specific era in film 
innovation, I'd say. You know, it remi- it's right before CGI started really taking into effect. Oh yeah, and, and how then- funny! Again, going back to Jurassic, just a couple weeks later, Jurassic makes this movie look <laughs> like such crazy, bizarre indie film, like odd crap. And then you got Jurassic with the the sleek cgi and all that you know i do but. think this era like 93 to like 90 96 feels like a what's the right word like a time capsule of mm. an era before cgi doesn't get it right because if you look at movies that use cgi from like 98 to like 2003 2004 mm-hmm. some of them are unwatchable because the cgi is so bad mm, so i feel like this movie yeah. this movie yeah, it's not great, but I think it just came out at the right time for that if for that era. Yeah. I, I just don't think I think this movie would not have any cult or any guilty pleasure vibe if it mm-hmm. came out in the early two thousands with some really awful CGI. It'd just be one of those movies people just set it yeah. and forget it and you don't right. really talk about it anymore. I mean, yeah. I, the bad of this movie, I think, it's what makes it so special in terms of totally. like a guilty pleasure. Totally. And you know, you know, we were just talking about the thing and practical effects and all that. So there's something about practical props and effects and, you know, actual things. When Daisy touches Yoshi's face, I know that she's touching a thing and that she's not just imagining it, you know, and it's green screen. There's something that like you can just see that the dimension of, of there's a physical thing. These Goombas are, you know, like animatronic, whatever, little heads. Right. And I really do appreciate that. You know? I, we we haven't talked about what do you think of the we gotta talk about there. the goombas oh my god and the, the whole creepy chair how it turns <laughs> you know their heads into them um i think the goombas are so fun another scene i love that i remembered well is the elevator scene when uh luigi starts swaying them and it's so stupid just to get them distracted so they can with the dancing sequence yep. with the, when they're mm-hmm. finally in their suits um what? the I, <laughs> It's so out of, it makes no sense, but just the fact that they're making them dance, it's just so funny. You're so right. Yes. Sorry to cut you off. You are so right. It takes too long to get them in their iconic suits because the whole time I'm like, they're still not in the uniform. Like, and no one's really in their uniform. Even Daisy in her mother's dress isn't pink. It's like purple. So yeah, it's just so weird to me because another movie would have absolutely put them in their you know, their character uniforms much earlier. So like, but, I agree, but I do I, love, you're right. What makes that elevator scene even more fun is they're finally, they have the hats on, they're in their like overalls finally. Right. I, and I understand because I do see in a lot of movies, like um, Marvel recently did this with uh, the Netflix show now on Disney. Uh, it's going to be a Disney plus from daredevil. Okay. That yeah. They kept a uh, Charlie Cox out of the, the outfit to the last episode. In oh, the that's first interesting. Season. Okay, it worked. It worked yeah. for the show, but for here, I agree with thousand percent. I think the, I understand why it starts the way it does, mm-hmm. but as soon as they get into the Mushroom Kingdom, I feel like, all right, here we go. Now they're in where they're supposed to be in green and red. Let's right. let's let's get this going. Yeah, because they steal these uniforms from like some workers. They they just pull them out of like a locker, right? Yeah. So they're kind of accidental. So I kind of wish they were like put in them when they're in prison earlier oh, in the that's movie. Oh, a good one. That's right? Good like one, that's yeah. just their jumpsuit, but it happened, you know, cuz already they're like changing all sorts of things from the game, so might as well, you know. So yeah, that's one big critique I have is yeah, no one kind of like looks like they would in the game. You're a- Go ahead and say it. Dinosaur. You may think of evolution as an upward process. Loyal child of the royal family. What I care about is the future of our species. I think the Goombas are fun. What do you think of them? It was odd. <laughs> Super <laughs> I'll odd. I'll say this. Um... <laughs> I, I actually I love them too. I actually, but again, nothing with nothing to do with the game, any game in in Mario, right? None, none, right? Well, none, so, not one yeah. thing. I don't. I really do think we you meant we joked about the drugs being used on the set. Like, <laughs> what, I, who comes up with this design? It's just so odd of the little head and the big body. It's 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 an interesting dine. It's an it's very Beetlejuice to me. Right. Ooh, like that's especially very... when his mm-hmm. head shrinks, you know, at the end, you know, I feel like and I feel like, you know, actually, I feel like I read that the right. So the writer director, uh, or I'm sorry, the directors, because the writers were separate. The directors were a husband and wife team. 
Their names were Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jankel. I think they were foreign. And I did read somewhere, maybe you did too, Dave, that they kind of, I guess they came from animation. They did a lot of music videos. They had directed one movie before this um, called DOA with Meg Ryan and, and Dennis Quaid. So they had at least one other feature. But I feel like I saw a quote that they came from like a Tim Burton mindset where like they got really funky with their work and animation and stuff. So that's why I do think of Beetlejuice and maybe some other Burton-esque things when it comes to this movie you know just gave this movie a better director oh yeah oh tim burton would would have been really interesting with this especially back then but he was busy with other great stuff i just thought of like so many things tim burton would have had. right oh my god the production i mean i do think that the production design in this despite of it's supposed to look that like apocalyptic i think right the production design is really good in this movie yeah Oh yeah, very gritty. It's very like '90s grunge. What what the '90s thought the future would be like, you know. So, it totally works for me for sure. Yeah, the set. So who got and a, who got who got it right? Back to the Future Part Two or Super Mario Brothers? Who got the future? Oh God, that's interesting. I feel like probably Back to the Future Two. I don't know. I haven't seen that one in a while. What do you think? Back, well, back to the Future Two for a few like things. Yeah, the fact that. You do have, and I did own a pair of the self-play sneakers. Um, <laughs> yeah. That and the fact that they actually almost predicted the World Series in 2015. Oh, I'll never, right. I will never forget the Cubs winning the World, almost winning the World. They missed it by a year. They won yeah. the World Series in 2016. Oh, and my then, gosh, that's funny. Oh, yeah. yeah. But no, yeah. Um, back to the Future Part Two. I don't yeah. think, yeah. Super Mario yeah. Brothers, outside of like my joke about like, four years from 2016 to 2020 i don't think right. it's like yeah it's just and you know it's funny that you do bring that up because even my husband greg was watching a little bit of it with me today and he noticed especially when koopa is pretending to be their lawyer when they're in like the i think i think mario says let's let's get out of let's bust out of this chicken coop or whatever they're in those cages in prison right mm-hmm. and koopa shows up as their lawyer quote unquote and is wearing you know a suit and tie he does come off very trumpy in there for sure maybe it's mm-hmm. the blonde and the the whole look and his grumpy face so yeah it's interesting to think i mean cuz you know, obviously trump was a big deal then so maybe they they were a little inspired by what well, in another back to the future two callback Biff in the future is a mm. uh, alternate Biff is a Trump ripoff. Yeah, it's pretty oh, much a sat- right. it's a satire on Trump. So totally. you're you're on the nose there. You probably yeah. See? there probably is something there. Totally. Ugh, creepy. How in that aspect, not much has changed in thirty years. Not right? much. Yeah. Name right Mario. Uh, last name Mario. I know. Uh, apparently, and you probably saw this too. Apparently, Disney got the rights to this just like a few weeks before or a few months, few weeks before filming. And that's why there was yet again another rewrite. And let me read you a little bit of trivia about this because it sounds kind of crazy what they did. So that's why Ed Solomon is the third writer. He had written Bill and Ted movies. He wrote Mom and Dad Save the World. Disney brought him on and the producers feared that the project was skewing too far from the intended audience. So without telling the directors and the cast, the producers and Disney brought in him and the script changed. And so oh, I mean wow. like that and like apparently made the directors want to run away, but they, they it was already too close to filming. So yeah, I think that's why we can tell there's like some you know, because sometimes it's very silly and family friendly. Like there are times when John Leguizamo as Luigi is so dumb that I'm like, oh, my God, come on. Right. Too like dumb. that whole flying bit. And then he's like, oh, I'm actually just hooked. Do you, you know that that scene where then Mario so jumps silly. and the, the fungus so helps him? Yeah. I'm like, OK, this is actually like too silly. Right. But then there's some sexual stuff. And um, also, did you catch as an adult? Uh, uh, I almost called him Hopper. Um, Koopa like kind of wants to have sex or rape um daisy he's he's like oh yeah he's got his tongue out he wants to kiss her and then he says like i'm not done with her yet like ooh, so like there are definitely some adultish things going on right kind of goes with the person we were talking about before (laughs) yeah totally you are again so right and maybe they knew something yeah um no no yeah like i i think the Disney of it all is a very interesting. I mean, I think the answer is one big question that goes back to when we started the old, why can't we find this anywhere? And it's probably yeah. a rights thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's, it, it, it can't be on Disney plus 
it would be, but Disney has no, no doesn't have the rights to it. Yeah, that's so interesting. Because what's the studio behind the new one? Is it Fox? It's Universal. It's Universal. It's Universal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. So it'll be on uh, Peacock before we know it. Um, love that. Um, <laughs> well, or maybe not. I don't know. You never know with really successful ones. I like to wait. But um, yeah, you're right. That is interesting. So I guess rights were for sale and Universal got it. Because it is weird. And it's also weird because it's not Disney. It was their... Like sub- Buena Vista. It's like mm-hmm. their subdivision. So that means like Disney proper didn't want to... So they knew it was going to be a little grungy, a little adult, a little weird, right? So it's very interesting how little things, faith. Yeah, right? I, it's weird. They wanted they threw, to jump in late but didn't actually really want it. It feels right? like they threw in some of these movies to their sub-departments when they didn't have as much faith to put the, the, the castle brand on it. Mm, totally. Because, I, yep. mean, there's, there's, I mean, there's some gems on their sub-brands that – Oh, I yeah. Mean, you even look at like something like Miramax is a sub. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, People for forget. A long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so essentially, Scream is a yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. dimension Isn't that was, funny? Yeah, it's yeah. so funny. Some real um, violent horror films are sort of under Disney. Sort of Disney. Yeah, I remember when I got my screening, my screener to uh, Hellraiser last year. Oh yeah, that was pretty it, good. I I liked it a lot. I thought yeah. she was fantastic as as Pinhead. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but no, the the big LOL of it all was it says every couple of minutes it pops up property of Walt Disney, oh, and it just yeah. my head. I'm like, oh, that's so funny. That's yep. just so funny. Mm-hmm. That just this violent horror movie. Just that is funny. Oh my Disney. god, that's so weird. Yeah, that is so weird. Love um, it. But no, yeah, something uh, not seen per se, but like two things that I wanted to note that I found out were in in terms of someone that was offered the role to do, uh, the directing job was Harold Ramis, but he turned it down. Interesting. Cause yeah, I did see that Ghostbusters was maybe a legit inspiration or at least sort of like, you know, uh, subconsciously a, 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 um, inspiration. So that's interesting. I could see that. And he probably would have, I bet made it much clearer, but interesting. So he turned it down. Yeah. And then I didn't see too many other director. Um, that was the only one that I found the only one. Yeah. Yeah. And then the big Luigi, what if, was uh and i'm gonna say the actor first and then when you think about the era it actually makes sense for what he was doing at the time tom hanks yes i did hear that tom hanks was being considered which is so funny because 93 was also the year of philadelphia i believe yes right? sir came out yes, later sir. in the year after this so can you imagine if he did this and then his next movie was philadelphia what what a wild one i Tom Hanks in Philadelphia is probably in my top like 10, 15 favorite oh performances of all time. Yeah. I feel confident in saying that if he did Mario Brothers and it was as bad as this was, he wouldn't have won the Oscar because it would have had that prisoner of the moment mindset right. that you're thinking of like, okay, he had a great, incredible performance in Philadelphia but wait isn't did he do that Mario movie right let's give yeah, it to and, like someone and else. back then because nowadays that happens sometimes but people don't care but back then people would have cared more about your choices and and the timing of things right yeah mm-hmm. wow that's a really interesting thought they must rescue the princess And make it safely back. Later, alligator. To our world. Are you alright? Before time runs out. Other options if Bob Hoskins didn't take it. Oh yeah. Uh Uh-huh. I don't believe some of these, but we'll see. Jim Belushi. Okay. Um, Danny DeVito, too short. Right. I did hear that Danny DeVito was was on their list, yeah. Bruno Kirby. Bruno Kirby. Oh, yeah. He's in, I think, When Harry Met Sally. Right. He's a, okay. Yeah, he's also in The Godfather Part 2. Oh, there you he go. Played, it all goes back to The Godfather. Yes, he plays a young Clemenza in the, uh, the, oh, the, okay. uh, the Nero yep. sequences. That's cool. Um, Joe Mantanga. Mantanga? I oh. always say his name wrong. <laughs> yeah. No, I think you said it right. Yeah. I forgot about him. Yeah. Uh, I, Ke- I could see that. Kevin Klein. I don't no, know. but Kevin Klein, honestly, at this time, Kevin Klein was was up. I was about to say nominated was considered for everything. I know he he was the first choice for Death Becomes Her, the Bruce Willis role. Like he was up for every role at this time. No, that would I be re- a no. I remember I if I rem- I think I got the, the years right. I think after 
93, like 94, 95 is when he did in and out, right? Uh, yeah, I talked about it last year. That was 97. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. That was, oh, wow. Yeah. Never mind. September 97. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the last three that I saw was John Totoro, Too okay. Tall. Yeah. Um, Oliver Platt. Oh, that's interesting. I could totally see that. I know he's tall as well, but you know. And probably no offense to Bob Hoskins, probably would have the next person would have been my pick, especially if we would have gotten Koopa as Pacino, would be Joe Pesci. <laughs> wow, Joe Pesci. But you know, I wonder if Joe Pesci, I mean, because this was right after Home Alone 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wonder if he'd be like, I. I, I, I gotta like do something else and not be with another guy doing crazy things, you know, but that, oh yeah, with him and Al Pacino. Oh my God. That's funny. Interesting. Yeah. And I saw that Danny DeVito not only was offered the role of Mario, he was also offered the director position apparently, but turned it down. What he had, had he had directed anything by, by then? I, I know like he did. He might oh. have, let me see real quick while we're talking about him. Okay. He's directed a few things, but I don't know what a lot of these are. Oh, there you go. So by, by the time the movie came out, he had directed Oh uh, yeah. Throw Mama from a Train. Yep. Uh, and the, the War of the Roses. The World, and then Hoffa. I didn't even Hoffa. know he directed Hoffa. Okay. And yeah, then he, wow. And he went off to direct a movie that everyone from our demo loves. Iconic. Us. Matilda. Yes. I forgot he directed that. That's why that movie is so good. Was was there any other casting like uh trivia for the Samantha Mathis role? <laughs> That was the one that had like the most actually. Oh, did it? Oh, I yeah. didn't see. Wendy Crusen. Oh my gosh, she's she's so much older. She was in the Okay, I'm going to talk about the movie The Good Son later this year. Do you remember The Good Son? I love The Good Son. Love The Good, the good Son is so son. good. So good. She's the mom. So she's Oh, sorry. She, she's way too old. Yeah, she's too old for Daisy, yeah. Oh, yeah, Good Son is a classic. Um oh. Kim Thompson? I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. Carol Kane? really carol kane she was in the adams family movies at this time carol kane she's older okay that's um, random elizabeth pena oh okay so they would go hispanic interesting okay that one that one i i knew who she was yeah Veron- veronica castro no idea no idea either and then the, probably the worst pick no offense to her but she i only really like her in in uh hocus pocus kathy and johnny Oh, Kathy and Jimmy would. Oh, Najimi, you know, yeah. she would have been really funny. Which I can't imagine a funny Daisy. Daisy's like the pretty much like the only like kind of straight character like living in the real world. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. No, not again. Super Mario Brothers. This ain't no game. I definitely wouldn't call this a bad movie. Would you call it a bad movie? Like a bad movie that you love? I wouldn't call it a good movie. I yeah. would call it a movie that accomplishes its goal. I, I consider, like, for me, me specifically, what my taste like, a bad movie for me has a level of unrewatchability. This movie yeah. is actually re- very rewatchable with a lot of the, like, Easter eggs. Totally. That you find yeah. in, the, in the movie. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Next time, there's going to be a new movie that we'll talk about, so stay tuned. And please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram for updates. Bye.